Hey, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today is July 14th, 2019. We're going to we're gonna talk a little bit today. We're going to write a little bit of go code today. We're going to have a good time chatting. How's it going there, chat room? Let me take a look see you over here. Hey, Cypher Coder and Nightbeat, Chris Jones. Hello, hello. Good to see you. Sean is here. Copper Beardy, Tagaron, and Stelzy. Good morning. Good afternoon. Steel to 79 just resubscribed for nine months. I don't know where that extra is coming from. Thanks so much for the resub. I really appreciate that. Yes, I do. It's because I have stream elements open over here. Thanks so much for that. And that's going to put you into a green hat. Nine nine month subscribers have a green hat here. Welcome, thanks so much. Hey, ancient coder, and we'll make a donation to uh, Coder Dojo as we are with all of our uh, all of our cheers and subscriptions this quarter. I've got a new light. Check it out. What do you think of the new light? Does it make things look a little bit better here? I was looking at this earlier, and I thought uh, the new <clears throat> this is an Elgato key light that I've installed, and uh, I think it looks a lot better. I've got another uh, new camera I'm going to be installing over the next day or two. I'm looking forward to getting that up and running over here. Um, always trying to improve. Always doing things to grow and change and enhance the stream here. Um, yeah, on Friday, we had our ASP.NET Core workshop. What would you think? We went for about uh, almost eight hours. We went for seven hours, 45 minutes. It was, it was a long day. We covered a ton we found a little bit of an issue with Visual Studio Code along the way, but I think we, um, I think it was pretty productive. We we covered a lot. We didn't get all the way through all of the material, but I think we got through enough that folks understand how to get started, how to get in and and be, um, yeah, kickstart their .NET experience. You enjoyed it. Hope I'm well rested. I am absolutely because we're going to go back at it this Friday. And we're going to do the Blazor workshop and build your first Blazor application. And that'll be a lot of fun. Thank you, Ancient Coder. Um, nothing Else Matters says it was very good. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words. I've got, I've got all my Twitch gear on because tomorrow's Prime Day. And if you're, a, if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, you can get Twitch Prime free. Click the button up above me. It's somewhere right over here. And you can get uh, connect to your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. And you get free subscriptions here on Twitch. And uh, it'll also, right, it'll, it doesn't remove all the commercials. It'll remove the commercials on one channel that you choose to subscribe to. Little bright lighting. I know I'm, I'm working on trying to get the lighting a little bit tuned in here. Um, actually, it's this one I can turn down. Because I've got two sets of lights now. Now look at that. I moved my camera. There we go. So I'm still I'm still figuring out and getting the camera the lights set up quite right. I think that's that's actually pretty good. Ah, let's see here. See now I've got it. I don't have it tilted quite right. I think that's all right. Am I all right there? See, I've got a new camera that I'm in. I'm installing tomorrow, tonight, tomorrow. It's on a uh, tripod. It's going to be sitting right over here. And uh, yeah, uh, high dev, 60 frames a second, all that good stuff. So I think th the other thing I've been told is I need to start considering putting powder on. Ooh, I don't know about that. Um, so there's been a topic. Oh, let's get some music playing here in the background, and we'll chat for a little bit. And I want to hear your opinion on on this topic. It's something that's been going around for about the last day or two here on social media, and it's something that I think is kind of important for us to understand and discuss. So let's get um, let's get a song playing here in the background. I'm going to play um, I'm going to play Orchid. This is from Music to Code By. It's music that's been engineered, it's been designed to get you in the groove, to get you focused on whatever task it is that you might be working on. Whether it's coding, homework, chores around the house. It'll help get you in the groove. There it is. 
get you focused on whatever task it is that you might be working on. It's written by our friend Mr. Carl Franklin. Check it out at mtcb.pwop.com where you can execute the music command in the chat room and learn more all about it along with getting that link so you can click through and find out about Music to Code By. Thanks so much, Carl. We appreciate that. You let us listen to your music while we're coding together here on stream. So I hinted about it in the title of the of the video. You can see it right here below me. Um, something's been, been discussed and a lot of people have gotten angry about it. I don't think it's something to be angry about, but there's something that's been discussed for a while here on Twitter. It goes back and forth and every now and again, it comes up again. And it's the idea of the 10X developer or the 10X engineer. And the idea is, there it is. So what is a 10X engineer? What is this unicorn? The idea is that you have some rock star developers. You have some folks that are really amazing in your organization. I think it's over here. Here. I'm still seeing a little bit of... There we go. Um, you've got really great developers in your organization. And this is Nathan Epstein that writes up about if you have these rock star developers, these really great folks, they can have 10 times the productivity of your other developers. And there are folks that get offended by this. There are folks that are upset by this. Um, but there are some folks that also misinterpret this. Let's talk about what a 10, 10x developer is. Technopedia, before I go back and go through everything that Nathan describes here, a 10x developer is an individual that is thought to be as productive as 10 others in their field. So you hear him referred to as 10x programmers, 10x engineers. They're 10 times the outcome of their colleagues. That's And that's something great to aspire to. Uh, the John Carmacks. Yes, John Carmack was the developer behind Doom and ID software led that organization and just was, had a tremendous amount of output that he was able to deliver and that's something that uh, is is a tremendous asset to have these are your lead engineers these are the folks that are carrying your organization when we look at Nathan's definition over here, Nathan says these are strong programmers who can write business logic. And I hope that's something that all of us can learn to do. And we can write good code. This is different from being able to write application logic, but code for other people and should be written as such. So you're writing code so that other folks can consume it, can read it. And you're making them able to contribute. You can design and architect things correctly. Yeah, that's something that I think comes with study, with practice. Somebody who's experienced, yes. This one I'm not sure about. Strong programmers know a lot. I don't know about that. Strong programmers that know their product, that know their project, yes, I'll agree with. But you don't have to know every teeny little thing about a Star Trek episode or about the space race or about international politics. But if you know a lot about software engineering and the project you're working on, great. And the, te and the technology you're using, fantastic. This one, I think, is something that we're all doing a bit of. We learn a lot. Strong programmers, 10x programmers learn a lot and there's something to be said for the ability to learn things quickly you want to be able to teach a lot that's something that i think you see i do a lot here strong programmers can take ownerships of projects yes absolutely now the reason that this discussion i think these are all very good things for strong programmers for strong engineers 10x engineers to be able to do Confused Coder says, the greatest skill for a coder is realizing there is always someone who knows more than they do. Yes. Self-confidence, but with humility. Absolutely. There are only, only maybe a dozen, two dozen developers in the world who can, can truly be said 
they know more than anybody about this thing. C Sharp, there are maybe two or three people who know more about that than anybody else in the world. Why? Because they write the programming language. They know literally everything about it. It's their job. That's what they do. Now, where this discussion of what a 10x program or 10x engineer, and these are all very good qualities that I would look for in someone. These, these seven bullets that Nathan has here. And I applaud Nathan for that. Well done. Yes, these are things that I look for in a engineer inside of a in in a 10x developer someone like that hey brave cobra good to see you um where things got kind of distorted shikar karani on twitter you can find this this status and i'll link it here in the chat room hey crows good to see you the controversy is Shikar's interpretation of this. Founders, if you ever come across this rare breed of engineers, grab them. If you have a 10x engineer as part of your first few engineers, you increase the odds of your startup success significantly. That paragraph, I agree with. For what Nathan has described as a 10x engineer, yes, I completely agree with. The problem is when you look at the rest of Shikar's thread. How do you spot this person? They hate meetings. They think it's a waste of time and obvious things are being discussed. If Nathan's discussion here of they teach a lot and they take ownership of projects, well, that goes completely counter to Shakar here in point number one. Time in the office for 10x engineers are highly irregular. They tend to work when very few folks are around. No disagree once again see point number one laptops uh 10 10x engineers laptop screen background color is typically black they always change defaults completely disagree here um and i would actually suggest that they don't care what their background color is because they're never looking at their background do you ever see my background here on stream no. Hey, Asynxis, good to see you. That sentence only applies if you listen to that engineer. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. 10X engineers know every line of code that is going into production. If a QA or support folks alert an issue, they precisely know where the fault or bug is and can fix the same in hours versus days. This is the first point that I'll agree with Shakar on. Looking back over here, they know a lot. They know everything about the application that they've been working on. So I'll agree with Shakar on point number four. We're one of four so far. Number five, most of the 10X engineers are full stack engineers. For them, code is code. They don't care whether it is front end, back end, API, database, serverless. I have rarely seen them doing UI work. Strongly disagree. There's a lot of user interface folks that I've seen working and they've done tremendous things and made a big difference. Don't tell any discipline of engineering coding development that they are not valuable or worthwhile to their company. That's shameful, number five. Shame on you, Shakar, for saying that. Right? Yeah, yeah. Shame. 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 Shakar is a uh, investor in India who's investing in startups. This from Nathan, I'll share this. The 10X engineers can convert thought into code in their mind and write it in an iterative fashion. Given a product feature, they can write that entire feature in one or two sittings of four to six hours. Disagreed entirely. You are making a estimation on somebody's, not just their productivity, but how valuable, how fast they can complete something. No. No, I had a manager at one point in, in chat room. Tell me if you've had managers like this before. I had a manager who said that, um, you know, we can get this feature done over a weekend. We'll just take tell the developers, you got to hang out here at the conference room, bring all their machines in there and just keep feeding pizza under the door. Are you kidding? That is insulting. No, 
I'm not even gonna dignify this one with with evaluating it as for its a no that is an insult to the engineering software engineering profession seven 10x engineers rarely look at help documentation of classes or methods they know it in memory and can recall from memory they write code at the same ease as writing English no breaks no pause just type friends have you ever seen me look up look up documentation here on stream of course you have of course you have everybody has to reference documentation at some point because either you don't understand something in properly entirely or you've written something and it didn't behave the way you would you expected it to and you want to double check that what you understand right that, that it's behaving that the framework the technology that you're depending on is behaving the way you expect it to so completely wrong 10x engineers are always learning new frameworks languages ahead of everyone in the company they're not afraid of anything new if there is something new like blockchain they gobble up set up experiments before anyone is getting started that i would feed back to number five here i don't completely appreciate the way that he describes number eight but i see the correlation to they learn a lot i i once again i don't appreciate his tone this is the perception of a code monkey yes and that's why documentation exists says sean yes you don't need to know the entire code base if you have enough tests observability and more than one person can debug that yes uh, what I think is coming out here, and I think what chat room is, is hinting at, is that 10x engineer, that 10x developer, is 10x because they have a team that they're helping move faster. They're plowing the, the, the path ahead of them. They're opening up and making it easier for the folks behind them to get things done. 10x engineers are poor mentors and they can't teach others on what to do or parcel the work they always think it takes too long to teach or discuss this is exactly counter to number eight literally within seconds of your own typing here shakar you've count you've contradicted yourself come on i would never i agree brave, brave cover this isn't somebody that i would work with and i and yes uh, Copper Beardy says number nine is exactly the opposite of what I want in a good engineer. Yes. 10x engineers don't hack things. They write quality code and know exactly how the code has to evolve and have a mental model of overall code structure. I love the spelling here. They write at least w at most one design document and the rest is in the code. Okay, that's once again counter to number eight. If they're writing experiments, they're hacking. They're testing out. They're trying new things. Once again, you're contradicting yourself. I'm not even going to dignify this. Number 11. 10x engineers really job hunt or move out of the company. They move out because you make their life miserable in the process, meetings, training, and other non-value-added activities. I'll agree with the last sentence here. If you come across them, hold on to them, celebrate them. These folks do move on. These folks do change jobs because... They get bored. They want to invent the next thing. They have an idea and they want to go and invest time in it. I'm com a sop vop. No, this isn't ironic at all. Because he actually follows up this post and doubles down on it. I'm surprised by my by extreme views on 10x engineers. They're great individual contributors. They might may not be good with teamwork, so what? They can be phenomenal in the early stage of a product cycle. I'll agree with the second half of that, with that last sentence. They can be phenomenal in the early stage of a product cycle. Yes. The people that you're describing, though, Shakar, aren't 10x developers. They're a cancer to your organization. You will not grow. You will not be able to bring in additional folks and have them grow and learn. These are the people who will hold on to things and will not share them with the other engineers that you try to hire. Maybe that is why developers come from come to America from India. Um, I think there's other political and financial reasons they do that. I think mentoring is really important and can improve you as well as as well since students often ask unpredictable questions, says Crows. Yes, I, I agree with that. So students do ask 
questions that will change your mind, get you thinking about different things. I cannot disagree more strongly with Shakar and his evaluation of developer talent. That's not talent. So, It's also a bit of an Indian tech culture thing, says Stelzi. I heard that Indian coders are not treated well. I've heard that as well. Yes. And that and another one of those political financial reasons why some of these folks find their way here to the states. People leave when changing jobs is less painful than staying, says Stormfist. Or they gain something that makes the job change worth it. Yes. Financially and um, intellectually. Something that's intellectually stimulating or challenging is, is one of the reasons why I see some of these folks change jobs. Um, particularly, it financially doesn't become an issue, right? Though, if they're providing that level of value to an organization, I've I've seen these folks say, eh, you know what, I could, I could really use a couple extra bucks. And the employer is more than happy to pay because they're getting that value. It's when you, if you're delivering value to the organization, when you say, you know what, I could use a couple extra bucks, that's when they're more than happy to say yes absolutely here's joe bag of donuts and they're the linchpin they're the anchor that makes our development team go and um, deliver the great product the great applications that we've been servicing and managing that's the, the finance those folks can write their ticket they they shouldn't have any financial concerns at all um, Nile Crack says, yeah, me, I need to read 10 times something to make it work. <laughs> I, I've been there. I've been there. There's, the, there's some concepts, there's some things that take me a little bit of time, a little bit of a struggle to make sure that I learn and understand it properly before I'm able to consume and do something, uh, do something great with it. So. Um, there is a point where the financial aspect isn't the driving factor, says Stormfest. Completely agreed. There's, th there comes a, a point in the growth of, of some of these folks where, yeah, the finances aren't a big, big deal. So this is another article from uh, Yevgeny Brickman about how it's not a myth. I completely agree. I've worked with some of these folks that I would consider... 10x developers. I, I work with some of them right now, and they're amazing folks. Um, you've seen some of them speaking at conferences, and they are tremendous. What makes them even better, right, is productivity is a fuzzy thing, but that they're able to make you productive because of the tools, the frameworks that they've thought through and built, and now they're teaching you how to use. Good morning, Kasukin and Frank. Good to see you. If this was written 20 plus years ago, I'd recognize the definitions. Maybe. Philippe, good to see you. Hello, hello. All right. So that's that's what I wanted to talk about this morning around 10x developers. I think it's, it, it's something where um, when I was working in, in the dot-com space here in, in my, my area in Pennsylvania, um, near Philadelphia, um, I was considered a 10x developer. I was able to just build a ton of stuff very, very quickly and and make my teams more productive. But um, I had, I as, as the original Twitter post said, I also had a little bit of an attitude issue. Part of that was I didn't understand, I didn't know that that I had, that I had this, the disease that I've since had to confront and, and learn how to deal with. I have celiac disease. I have to understand that I have a different diet now. I have something that I need to manage. And at the time, it was... I had, I was not... Um, regardless of how much food I would eat, what type of foods I would eat, I was not being um, not being nourished. I wasn't getting the nutrients that I needed. So I had a real bad attitude a lot. I was one of those angry, nasty developers. And it's not something that I'm proud of. 
Um, and I, I would love to go back and apologize to, to some of my colleagues and some of my managers that I had a real hard time with because I, my body wasn't right. Um, and that's, that's something to be, to be said that you know your body best. And if something doesn't feel right, you got to do something about it. And I didn't know what was going on there. And, uh, but I got a, I got a ton of stuff done. So people put up with me. So Stormfist says one of the worst things that can happen is for an employer to set things up. So re to reduce your productivity. Open office plans. I don't think off open office plans are that bad. Um, there's there's definitely a, a time and space for them. Um, I've seen them work quite successfully for the organizations, the teams that I run at Microsoft. But, um, and, and for the open office that we had at the, one of the dot coms that I was at, it was all right. It wasn't. It wasn't great. I'll agree with that. But as as somebody who was, who who feasted on being focused for so much of the day, the interruptions were difficult. I'll completely agree with that. Me? Yep. I absolutely. Um, the crows is yes. Uh, Tagaron says I get distracted when I'm in a room with more than four to six others. Yeah, I agree. No, Stormfist, I didn't know that something wasn't right. I was losing I was losing weight and I thought things were things were well. But nope. Nope, nope. Um Ninth stage of Tour de France is going on right now. That's alright. Um Gumshoe has a question here. Let me come back to that in a second here. It's slightly off topic. Uh, Coded Beard hates open offices, can never concentrate with stuff going on around me. Yeah, I agree with that. It's the visual, the movement. Yes, the movement and seeing something happen out of the corner of your eye is distracting, is something difficult to, to deal with, to have to manage, right? And to, to stay focused and have those blinders. Uh, I was a big fan of the four foot wall cubes. Um be able to sit and you know you weren't interrupted your visual space wasn't interrupted um, so it was easy to focus without having things going on around you so but the the thing with that though was I'd get in the focus I'd get so tuned into whatever it was that I was doing someone would come up behind me tap me on my shoulder and it would startle the, the startle the snot out of me oh my goodness um, nothing else matters says I develop my best from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. Yeah, I've seen that with folks also. Some tremendous folks that I work with right now, um, they do their best work overnight. Things are quiet, it's dark, and they're, they're in the zone at that point. Something to be said for they're a little bit tired, so their mind isn't racing into how many different things and they're able to focus on something. Um, yes, I am going to be moving on in just a second here, Gumshoe. Not a problem. Mesa, Arizona, it's already 80 degrees. Ooh, boy. You were definitely in the in the zone working like that, says Alka. Yeah, I agree. Tagaron says, I'm an early bird working at 7 a.m. Absolutely. that's And that's um, something that I strive to do as well. Work first thing in the morning. Yep. Um... Fantastic, Alka. Thanks for sharing. Add all teammates as mods tool. Um, let me take care of... Let's make Alka a mod here real quick. So you're going to see more and more of the folks from the Live Coders team are going to be moderators here in the channel. Just to make sure that some of the things like what happened on Thursday don't happen again. Where we have folks pop in that are creating some hateful speech and some hateful... Uh, Hateful usernames in channel. It's not fun. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. So let's move on. Um, I'm glad we got a chance to talk about that and, and talk about what's happening with the concept of the 10x developer. Folks are get, can generate 10 times the productivity, but it's better if they do that with their teammates. 
You also have this problem with the bus factor then, right? You've heard about bus factor? If a bus were to were to crash and and take out some members of your team, how many members do they take if they take out uh, members of your team? How many do they does that bus have to have to take out, take away from work for it to destroy the productivity of your organization? And if that number is one, you got a real problem. You got a real problem. Um, Copper Beardy says, I have anxiety. They have anxiety and depression. So work time changes from little code to fully focused depending on state of mind. I Yes, I get that a lot as well, Copper Beardy. I will, depending on my mood, be very productive or have zero productivity. I am right there with you. That bus factor absolutely needs to be greater than one. Amen, President, not sure. So let me come back to question. Let's let's start getting into our code. And I'm going to answer a question that Gumshoe has for us here. Gumshoe Noir says, I'm using VS Code on Windows 10. Visual Studio Code, that's a great text editor that's available for you. I've been using the edit find in files that displays in the left column along with the usual sp suspects of explorer, debug, and etc. This morning, I find its window along the bottom where the terminal window is. And with loads of output, it's difficult to use there. It's much more useful on the left column. I haven't been able to figure out how to move it back. Um, that's weird. Does Can you move it? Let's reopen this. So I'm going to launch Visual Studio Code here. Um, so you're doing the find in files, right? If I, There it is. So I just did Control-Shift-F. And... And it puts the search up here. Let me turn that off. I don't need the voiceover right now and over here so it put it up here but it it popped up down at the bottom I didn't know you could move that search like that right click on its top bar um, move bar right so you can move it over there you can move it back over there hide sidebar pops back up so it's this right here it's in the settings under search location right click on the top of the bar and there's an option to flip it yeah so you can flip it back and forth right but search search string right Search settings, search behavior, files exclude. Let me close that. Holy crow. So many settings around search. There it was, search location, where? Include history. This one, sidebar or panel. So you can put it down at the bottom. And it's down here. So that turned it off and it's not over there. But there, turn it back to sidebar and it's over here again. Cool, I didn't know you could do that. Thanks for sharing. I appreciate the help there. Is that Sari? Very cool. All right. I'm going to be using Visual Studio today. Hey, Nick Cravers here. Hello, hello. So. Hey, Pac-Man Jr. Yeah. I, I like the find on the left there, but thanks so much, Pac-Man Jr. And we're going to make a donation to Coder Dojo. Like we are with all of our subscriptions and our uh, cheers this month. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, Coder Dojo is helping make uh, training facilities and and set up teachers. So if folks want to learn how to, how to develop, how to get involved in the tech industry anywhere in the world... They'll help out and have a facility for folks to learn. Thanks so much for that. Yeah, darn Skippy, Threnan. Darn Skippy. You saw the 
emote go flying up the screen. All right. So I want to continue talking about our um, scheduling application that we've been building here for Sebastian Writing Associates. That's that nonprofit organization that schedules um, disabled kids, folks that have have a little bit of whatever challenge it might be in life, some un and underserved folks. Um, give them an opportunity to to experience some horsemanship, a little equine therapy. And we need to be able to schedule volunteers. So we've we've. We finished building a way for um, volunteers to be able to log their availability. And we started work on building up a grid so that a manager could look at the entire week and see exactly when folks are available and to be able to manage the scheduling of um, the scheduling of classes for those folks. So this is living out here. Thanks so much, Copper Beardy, for that cheer. I'm going to log that. And I'll even include the bonus there. Thanks so much. So that we'll uh, put a little cheer graffiti into our code here. So this is being managed out here on a shared project at Fritz and Friends Resource Management. And we've got a pull request to take a look at. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to close these other ones. Fix the small bug in the top and bottom styles of items in the day view. Let's take a look at this. So Sean's got a uh, fix here for us. Um, looks like it's one file changed. Let's see here. So let me show you the application before we go too far into this. So here's my instance of it over here. Start this up. I, you know what? I don't think I have the container running right now that has the database. Let me see if I can get that started before this. Yep. Docker start. No. Get that database running. There it goes. Oh, we may have beat it. <laughs> I think we did. Uh, here it is. So, um, when you look at the availability, come on, that should work. I've got a break point here. Yep. Let me restart. I didn't beat the database starting. So you had never heard of Coder Dojo. Very nice. Yes. Yep. We want to be able to support folks like that. Oh no. Um, get the person ID. Sequence contains no matching element. Oh, I'm not logged in. That's why. Uh, okay. Let's restart. Do this one more time. Yeah, we need to put some a login check around these things. Just to make sure. So, I will log in and... Do that. Which password did I use over here? Was it that one? Might have been that one. Maybe it wasn't that one. There it was. It was that one. All right, so if I go to my availability, there we go. So we have this day view down here um, so that you can see when you click on a given day, here's my availability. Here's when I've said that I have some options, right? When I can work, when I can't work over here. Now, we've still got a little bit of work to do to clean this up, but as a minimum viable, it, it works. We'll, we'll make it look better in a bit. Um, I want to get the functionality working. So what, what Sean has for us is inside the day view component, um, so we are formatting, looks like this is a Check. I'm not quite sure what you're doing here. String format. Ah, top, bottom, top, bottom. Okay, you're deciding whether or not... Looks like some of the CSS classes that you're putting together here. Am I right? Item top position. You're just 
changing the calculation slightly. All right, let's see how, how that change looks. I'm going to grab a copy of that. And um, it's for the border styling if an item starts before the day view or after the day view. Ah, okay. It shouldn't crash when you're not logged in. Yes, we should have it route appropriately to a not logged in page. That's a good point. We need an issue for that. Um, oh, that's a good catch also, Sean. Items in day view stack on top of each other when times overlap. Yeah, we're going to need those to sit side by side and figure that out. I'm going to create an issue here. Um, shouldn't crash when accessing a page that requires, um, requires a logged in user. And we'll make that a bug. It's a good first issue if somebody wants to take a look at it. Fantastic. All right. So I'm going to... I copied out that. Um, <laughs> jump over to PowerShell. And... Let's paste. Nope. That wasn't it. That one. There we go. So we can restart the application and see how that changes. You see two mics. Is one on the fritz? No. One is a more devious microphone. <laughs> See how that works? This one's for the voice change. Um, and for some reason, the ticker stopped going by up top there. Um, oh my gosh, I'm gone now. Where did the ticker go? There it is. There we go. Ruined, I know. All right, so now with that change in, I didn't break it, did I? No, there we go. So if we go to one of these, there, now we get the top bar. Cool. That's better. Thanks, Sean, that looks really good. Um, so I will stop this and I will accept Sean's change. Thank you for picking that up and uh, applying the fix. Good stuff. And we'll see Sean's name pop up up at the top there in our thanks to all the folks that contribute to our projects. Drawn to the dark side for a moment there? A little bit. Uh, saved, says Threnit. Yeah, yeah. Accidentally... Um, flipped away and I should have gone studio mode and flipped across. You're here for the 10x stream. So the comment that I made to just put a little uh, a little finish on the 10x discussion um, the comment that I made about um, 10x was uh, on Twitter was I'm not a 10x developer anymore. I don't develop that fast anymore. But what I do do I said do do is um oh my that's right george is uh i learn things quickly i'm able to set up good samples and share that knowledge with folks so that i make other folks more productive hey ultra how good to see you tony the cobble king hello welcome nice to see you tony um force multiplier for the win says nick craver yes Absolutely. Um, so, I should merge in those changes. Um, how do I get back to my version of this? I'm not going to be able to do it easily. I would love to say, oh, you have a fork over here. But I don't have an easy way to get back to my version of this. Uh, yeah, see, I, I don't. Hmm. 
right? That I would need maybe a bookmark. And who uses bookmarks anymore, right? Um, so let me pull in that change. I'm going to go back to my feature branch. I'm going to delete Sean's version of it. Um, and I'm going to pull in the upstream changes from the feature branch. There we go. So now I've got Sean's changes here locally. I'm not sure why it's saying there's four. Whatever, push it. We're gonna end up rebasing here before we commit into things. It The fork button does show up there. If I click over here and I click the fork button, right, then I can click through to it. It's like three steps to get to it though. It's like, tell me, you already have a fork of this. Click here to go get it. So. Right? Like, here I am in my version, my branch of it. And, oh, here's where you got it from. So. Um, you be you. Learn from others who are ahead. Pull other people up behind you, says Brett Miller. Yes, I agree. Pass that ladder down to, to folks to let them climb up and join us. You'll learn just as much by teaching as you will by doing. Absolutely. Um, Brave Cobra says, uh, why are we writing yet another calendar control instead of using an existing one like this? Let's see what we got there. That would be a good feature request for refined GitHub. Maybe. Um, this is, okay, this is a JavaScript calendar. We're building this calendar with Blazor. Um, but do we have, no. Um, I'm looking for a week view. So this isn't the way that I want to view the week view, right? I want to view, yeah, I want to view, do I still have it open? No, I want to be able to view the hours going down and see how many people are available. It's not quite the same. That's better. Um, but once again, this is written all, and this, this is a premium feature and this is written all in JavaScript. Yeah. Why didn't we get the, it's not horse. It's JavaScript is the command copper beardy. Um, is it possible to deploy a full ASP net core app inside an Azure function? Yes. Now, why didn't it play the mute, that sound effect? Right. Now I'm not getting any of the sound effects. Hey, there it goes. Needed to be refreshed. Um, but yes, I said JavaScript a few times. So it's this is certainly a nice user interface. Absolutely. This is the type of thing that we want to be able to generate, but it's not in the technology that we're building with. And part of the exercise is to learn how to do this with C Sharp and Blazor. Um, what's this from Smab? Don't be this person. Welcome to the company. This is the code. Wow, so clean. The code at my last job was so messy. Can't wait to start a few months later. Yeah. Don't be that person that messes things up. Um, Ultra Hal says, I started my C Sharp journey. Congratulations, welcome. I gotta say, including com ActiveX to C Sharp is mind boggling bunch of BS. That said, it's a lot of fun for an old retired engineer. Um, you shouldn't have to include com and ActiveX. Those are things that are available for folks that need uh, backwards compatibility. It's that ongoing theme you see from the Microsoft programming languages and frameworks, having that backward compatibility. Um, it's not required. You don't have to do that. And you don't see that when you get into the cross-platform things. There must be Blazor components that do the same, right? Not yet. They haven't been built yet. And I would love to do it. 
Just a suggestion, JavaScript Calendar would do great even in a Blazor app. It would. I'm not, I'm not debating that. Um, but part of the exercise is learning how to build a, a control. I, I could certainly pick up something like this and figure out and retrofit it and get it in there. Absolutely. Um, this is a premium feature. It's a paid feature. I'd have to buy this. Um, which, and there's, there's other JavaScript based calendars out there, right? Um, right. That I, I can grab that all kinds of folks have written, right? That will do stuff very similar. Um, eh, not a calendar. Um, I, we're going to need a date picker at some point. Um, but we're looking for that week view. Table based jQuery calendar, right? So there's one that is pretty close to what we're looking for. Um, calendar plugin with a heat map. That's not bad. We could use something like that. Right, I could definitely see this being a thing inside of our application right here. Um, horizontal calendar with events. That's not bad. jQuery schedules and events plugin. There, that does something very similar as well. So, mobile friendly calendar and schedule plugin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some really nice ones here. Um, but part of the exercise is learning how to build these. So. Right? Mm, I don't need it going across like that. But. Um, we'd be hitting JavaScript interop, which is absolutely doable. So. Been doing C Sharp for a while now, but not solely game modifications and stuff like that. Neat, says Fixter Jake 14 Jake continues, been at an internship using ASP, and it's been a great time learning all about that side of .NET. Well, welcome, Jake. I'm glad you're enjoying that. We should also teach people not to reinvent the wheel as well. It's a thin line. Agreed. Uh, agreed. The key point is learning. Yeah. Let's, let's do a little bit more on our or weak view um, and the data entry that we have on the screen at this point maybe we swap those out with some of these um, some of these JavaScript based controls so that we make it a little bit easier for folks to key that in and maybe we have our fully rendered um, customized style to display these things right why does that take so long there it goes. So, um, this I'm pretty okay with. And it's these that I, I think we absolutely should end up replacing. So we have a nice uh, data entry for those. We were working over here in this manager view. We now have the ability to, to turn off the time on the days going across. We want to make those right next to each other. And we need to figure out where this extra space is coming from up at the top. So how do we do that? How do we get those extra things? We're going to need to do some HTML inspection here. And figure that out. And the last piece then is for this week that we're displaying here. We aren't tied to a specific week yet. We need to get those schedule items and paint them on the screen for everybody, not just one of our folks. Um, there are Blazor alternatives as well, like SyncFusion. SyncFusion has one ready to go. Let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. Cool. Some of these were, these are just now coming online. Some of these haven't been available. Um, yeah, okay, I'm clicking the OK button for the cookies. Go away. Thank you. Um, that's great. There's options available for folks out there. This page is really slow. So, certainly. Absolutely. Is that, wow, uh, Alexianro, thanks so much. 
the cookie notifications are getting annoying, Frank says. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with that. Um, Ultra Hal, you're getting lost. What? If you want, if uh, Ultra Hal says, if I want to build Hal's brain I'll have to find another way. Hal kind of needs his brain if he wants another Leipner prize. <laughs> you're making the transition from 2015 VB Net to C Sharp. Uh, okay. It could be that grid template, the first column is time. Maybe. The cookie notifications, everybody has them. It's, it, and every website does it because they need to remember your state. It's the privacy declaration. It's the, well, we're using the cookies to know where you're using the application. So, so we're trying to learn about how to do this and how to do cool things with Blazor. Yeah, ancient coders are right. It's driving Cookie Monster crazy, says Gumshoe. Yes. Um, is it because the layout changed that we see all the, all of, all those this days? I don't know. I don't know what you're saying, Frank. I'm confused. Um, so I'm not sure why I've got this extra space up at the top here, right? If you look at this, so this is a grid here, and I have a span for that first and a span for the second. And these are the same size, 150 by 300, 150 by 300. Inside of this one, we have a div called day view, and it's that. Inside of this one, we have a div called day view, no times. Now, when we look at the computed layout for this one, um, I did. There it is. So, right, there's a border up at the top here. When I look at this one, it's got the same border up at the top. 148 by 299. It's the same. Ah, yes, it was a law change. Yep. The EU GDPR requirement. Absolutely. Um, Nick Graver says on cookie banners, they should have been a browser UI feature with website support. Millions of websites doing it instead of browsers doing it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a complete waste of, of developer time to have to build and manage those things. So why am I getting this extra little bit of space? Right? In between. Right? You see it. It's... What is that? Just above this. Is it is it because of the PM time at the... No, it's not the time. Right, if I zoom out a little bit so I can see everything here. Right. It's... It's not clear why it's bumped down. Because we'd really like these to have... Right, a consistent time going all the way across. So we're just reusing that date grid going across and it's just painted there. It's not clear why. Um, if I move this further down, the best way to find those is take the selector in the browser tools, click the space you're trying to find. Yeah, I... I Right, it's not there, it's... Right, it's somewhere in there, and I... I right, I'm trying to click that space right there, and it, it comes up as the entire box. Right, so I'm on that, but it's not that, it's this one which doesn't have space above it. Well, look at... Oh, actually, look at this. Hang on. 150 by 300, 667 on that span. Yeah, 100 by 300, 667. 
It's the exact same thing. It's just it's bumped down. You think it's the comment. That. That right there. But it's that same comment is. Right? Lives between these two. What is this thing? No. No, no, no. Hmm. I mean, I'll delete the HTML comments, sure. It's not changing it. So, where is this extra thing just above this? Box sizing, border box, width 150. Line height, font size, font weight. Right, and if I make the margin of this span, right, if I make that minus two pixels, it doesn't move it. No. Should the position be relative? We're we running into something like that? No. And if I make the position absolute, it's gone. So it's not a position thing. It is something within Bootstrap says Two Wolf Design. Should the time not anyhow be in its own column? With that, we now have the first schedule block is smaller than the rest. Oh, good point. So it allows for less text to display. Yeah. Okay. Does it also allow show this space in other browsers? Good question. So we're using uh, Chromium there. Um... So that's that's Firefox. I thought I had I thought I had this open in Edge. I guess I don't have it open in Edge. Well, that explains a little bit. I get the same thing in in Edge with with Chrome, right? So it's the same thing. If I use Chrome's tools to try and find that thing. Yeah. It's... Right, I'm running into the same issue. See the, the display inline block. That makes the space affect it. Try to edit the element as HTML. All right, hang on a second. The display inline block. Is that over here, this one? Okay, it moved it up, but everything else is now below it. Uh, but that makes the space affect it. Try to ed edit the HTML and remove all the space before the first span element to test that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Edit as HTML. Why won't it? There we go. So what Nick is saying is get rid of that. Nope, that didn't change it. Class weak view is what you want to edit. Uh, you want me to edit up in here. And chop that out. Is 
That didn't... No. The weak view doesn't have the inline on it to put them next to each other. What about the comment under weak view? Uh, I thought we deleted that, didn't I? Right, from weak view down to 8 a.m. now. Well, I deleted too much, but it didn't, it didn't affect it. It didn't clean that up at all. Um, padding on the text? No, it's not padding on the text. No. It's, I think the, the inline block on the span here. Right, you can see it it bops down just a bit. The second one. Yeah. If we just make it display in line, that doesn't no. Display block, no. Right, it's somewhere between the two. I hear this would be much easier with CSS Grid, but you're suggesting that we have just a weak view grid that does this. And we're then we're building the exact same thing again that does this. The yellow area comes to that part when you focus the schedule view without the bootstrap bits on the columns. So yeah. So if I, all right, so let's go the other way then. Let's rewrite this. A 10X engineer could fix it telepathically in their sleep. Wow. Wow, Brett, nice catch. We need browser live share, yeah. All right, so what if we go the other way and we, instead of trying to fight this and make it a, make it seven day views, what if we do make it just another grid? And we, do, we, I mean, we're going to be repeating a lot of the logic that's in the day, day view grid. Take, t take sizing off the parent container first. Take sizing off of this. Okay. So taking sizing, all the sizing off of that, and it still doesn't. So. So if I rewrite this as a brand new grid, the parent of the grid, well, the parent of the grid is there. That has padding bottom bo box sizing. I mean, if I keep going up to the container, right, if I take all that off, it still doesn't change it. I don't have a div class row here in it all. Could we refactor day view to draw multiple days with parameters? Well, oh, make the day view control do that. <laughs> just use a regular table. I kind of, a, that's the way I would have done it in 2003, uh, Tim. Yeah. Does it make the gap if you put the times on every column? Yes, it does. Yep. So the suggestion from Sean is let's refactor day view to allow you to specify how many days across to go and just specify additional columns going across. That's not bad. I like that suggestion. And I think we're going to go with that. And we'll... Do it live! We'll do it live. So I started manager schedule view and I just put 
day view show times true false true false here we may want to rename it then yeah sure well it is still day view we'll just put a day count in there instead um right so if if we want to be able to use it like this i can get rid of the spans and put a day count equals seven be able to consume that and show that number of grids going across we also need to be able to pass in the schedule for the whole way across um days view yeah css grid is a table but socially acceptable and that bothers me that oh you can't use drs and tds because it's not really a table you're showing now nah, come on now please tables don't work well when you rearrange for mobile agreed agreed can you put a spanner div between the h3 and the columns um well so the day view for the is right we'll have the uh the columns going across as spans inside of this and a div containing it i mean you know let's call this uh uh, yeah, my schedule container. I don't have a problem with that. Oh, did you know? Hang on. Did you know you could do this? Squall75, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you joining us. And I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Did you know? Oh, it's... I don't have the Emmet extension installed. Rats. But I can do... Hey, there it is. Right? Alt-Shift-W will do surround with. And it'll create a new tag there, and you can make it whatever tag you want. And it'll update on both sides. So that's pretty cool. You can do that in Visual Studio. My friend Mads Christensen showed that to me a long time ago. And I just keep forgetting to use it. Yeah, the Emmet editors are available. Um, it's immediately available in Visual Studio Code. You wrote most you write most of your HTML in Pug and Jade. Nice. Pug and Jade are templating technologies that you can use. Um, all right, so if I want to be able to pass in a day count, I need to set that as a parameter down here somewhere. So we'll just add another parameter. Um, and this will be an integer and it was day count get set and we'll default it to one so that only when we say oh we want seven do we get seven of them but we're going to need to do a four across that day count so that we can go across and display all of those days um <laughs> so now we don't have a show times show times kind of goes away here we don't have that anymore which is going to break a couple things so I can get rid of that one. Um, I don't have this if else if here. Um, <laughs> what I do have Come here you. Um, <laughs> the grid column here. <clears throat> we're going to do a for each across and we'll count right the number of columns for the number of days hey rambling geek good to see you and uh you know what i need to do um when i just put in that day count we need to put in our cheer that was 110 from copper beardy Um, and today is, what day is it again? The 14th of July. Thanks so much, Copper Beardy. Alrighty. So, I now have a day count. So, I can say... Right, I can do this as a for each here. For the grid columns. 
Um, it's not a four each though, is it? Um, that's better. And let's not call it I, let's call it column counter. Make it a little bit more descriptive. Um, and the column counter, we're gonna start counting at two. And it's less than two plus, um, well, it's less than one plus the day count. So it'll start at two. Uh, yeah, it's less than two plus it. Because it'll start at three, so it won't come through and do it a second time. Good. So grid column is then uh, at column counter. Hey. Hey. Fun. I'll just output it like that. Um, I need to move that inside. That's what it, why it wasn't showing it. Okay, so now it'll, it'll give me that style there. Rich Ellis, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Um, Nick says, I never noticed the default at four inserter for Visual Studio would use a parent scoped variable without batting an eye. Yeah, it is, because I've already got an eye up here for it. Um, why do I have this? Did I miss something? No. Not quite sure why that's... Okay. So I'll always get at least one grid column, and I should be able to have it generate the appropriate going across. We'll need to alter the CSS for the day view div to get the columns spaced correctly in the CSS grid, says Sean. Yeah, I think you're right. Don't need the at four. Oh, you're right here. Thank you. So what Nick was pointing out there, let me make sure I call that out. I had an at in front of here, right? You use that at that sign uh, to tell the Razor uh, templating engine that you're changing syntax back and forth between C Sharp and HTML. You don't need that right here because it assumes you're in C sharp inside of these curly braces. It only flips over to HTML when it sees the start of an HTML element. So it's actually a little bit smart there for you. Um, so yeah, it, right. I'm inside of a, a C sharp block here because I've got the at curly brace up top. Um, and you, right, the editor is telling us that you're inside of C sharp mode here inside of the four, you're going to output a little bit of this templating so that it knows what to put there. It's broken. Need to move line 12 down. Um, current time. Why do I need to move that down? That's the end of the current time I'm doing that once per hour did it have moved t the time for the other six day blocks uh, no the other six uh, uh, oh wait a sec wait a sec wait a sec this shouldn't be here No, wait a sec. I less than the hours per day times two. Um, I can get rid of that times two. This is only going to appear once. This will appear once for each hour. And then we'll output a grid column going across for each day using that technology. I think that works. We do have to fix some of the CSS. But that little bit of refactoring there should work. Since, it, since the time isn't used after. Yeah, yeah. So I'm only modifying and managing the time up top here. We will need to change this bit down here where we go through the schedule state so that it finds and places them in the appropriate 
grid column. And we'll size that appropriately. I'm not quite sure why I've got the red underscore here. Let's see how it works. It's a little confusing, says Nick. Eh, I think we're going to be all right. Here we go. Okay. Does not have a property to match the name Showtimes. What? I thought I deleted that. I didn't from over here. Fine. We'll have to fix that and rebuild. But the availability grid, this should still work. Okay. So... We need to fix some CSS there, as Sean was saying. It's not sized appropriately. Line 15 is an extra parenthesis and semicolon. Oh, you're right. Um, I don't need the semicolon, but that parenthesis was definitely an extra. I'm going to change my browser back. I changed it to Firefox because we were having a problem with the uh, Chromium Edge. Because it was staying on top of everything. I'm going to change back to Chromium. Start that back up and see how it goes. Good catch, Stelzy. Points to you. There it goes. Points, I don't know what you can use them for, but... Well done. So, availability. Oh, I'm not logged in. Yeah, I know. All right, so I still have to fix that column width there. Uh, Dan says, I re recently switched to Firefox. I can't believe how much faster than Chrome Firefox has become. Yes, they've done a lot to work on performance. There's something to be said for the folks that are trailing in a, the, the businesses, the organizations that are trailing, their product is not the top, um, top choice by folks. They get a little bit more aggressive in making things work better and being a better customer experience. So we need to fix that spacing just a little bit, but it still makes things appear correctly when I click around here. So that's pretty good, but we, st we still need to fix um, the spacing of this first one. That's okay. If you are working with CSS grids, I should stay in Firefox. The debug tools are excellent, says Smap. Okay. All right, I'll stay in Firefox. I'll take that recommendation. Um, so, right, the grid column one here, we're gonna need to fix that space size. This should size appropriately now. I should have looked at that manager grid, shouldn't I? Well, I tried to and it, let's try it again. We'll go look and see if it's laid out the entire grid properly. I bet you it hasn't. Because it's got a fixed width on it. Yeah. So we'll clean this up a little bit. That doesn't look like look like it's going to be too, too bad. And it does scale, right? It does shrink appropriately when I do that. That'll become an issue on smaller devices. Mm. We'll want that to scroll appropriately, right? Zach57, and I'm, I've got a white background so we can't s see the full announcement. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. So we are, oh my gosh, we're closing in on that 7,000 follower number. Look at that. When we get to 8,000, if we get to 8,000 before September 15th, I will dye my beard rainbow for .NET Conf and TwitchCon. .NET Conf, I'm one of the hosts. You'll see me all throughout the three days of that virtual event, and I will have a rainbow beard as a salute to you, our Twitch followers, uh, as a thanks. And yes, I will be interviewing Microsoft vi Vice Presidents with a rainbow beard. I've done it before. And... Um, I'll also keep that going for TwitchCon, where we're going to see and hang out with all of our friends in San Diego. We actually talked about .NET Conf at our weekly dev meeting at work, says Jake. 
Excited to tune in. Well, that's great, Jake. Um, you're going to see a lot more stuff happening over the next few months here on Twitch from the folks at Microsoft. Um, keep an eye on the Visual Studio channel. You can, um, I'll drop a shout out to the Visual Studio channel real quick. You'll find all kinds of official Microsoft stuff going on over there. And um, it also hosts a lot of great folks that are developing using Microsoft tools. So I encourage you to check that out. All right, so we got to fix a little bit of the CSS behind this because our day view, when it's more than one day, we need it to expand appropriately. It is hosting me right now because I'm the top priority on the Visual Studio channel. Gee, I wonder who manages that channel. Wow. It could be me. <laughs> There's also the Live Coders team. Um, make sure you check out the Live Coders team. Folks like you've seen Alka here in the channel a little bit today. Um, there's, um, who else is on the team that's been popped in here? Um, I think we're going to need to have to talk to Frank here in a little bit. And uh, that fr that's, did I see Rambling Geek here earlier? Rambling Geek is another member of the team. The Live Coders team, bunch of great folks. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Copper Beardy. Um, so, Smab recommends the CSS Grid Garden to learn how to work with the grids. Let's take a look at that URL. Oh, yeah. That looks very cool. Where you write CSS code to grow your carrot garden. What are only the areas that have carrots using the grid column start property? Nice. Grid column start three will water the area starting at the third vertical grid line, which is another way of saying the third vertical border from the left. So, one, two, three, and it would go across that way. Is that what this is saying? Grid column start. Three, and it moves it over there. Nice. Looks like weeds are growing. Use grid column start to poison them. Note that the weeds start at the fifth vertical. So one, two, three, four, five. Neat. So if we do grid column start five, and it's over there. Nice. That's what a great little tool here. You can extend the item across multiple grid columns by setting grid column end. So instead of ending at one, two, three, we would end it at four, right? Nice. That's, that's cool. Yeah, now let's see if we can fix the HTTPS error. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, grid column start and grid column end. You might assume that the end value has to be greater than the start value, but it turns out that's not the case. So if we set grid column end to uh, 1, 2, we can have it go backwards. Nice. All right. So... CSS Grid Garden, not bad. And they have one for learning flex as well. Very cool. You used Grid Row Start to do the same thing to position items vertically in the day view. Nice. Alka has a pretty fancy grid template. Let's see what he's sharing there. Ooh. Nice. All right. That's pretty fancy. Um, so we don't know how many grid columns going across we are. We should be passing in the width of our of our grid externally. And we want each column to be how wide? Right? I feel like while this is class grid... Uh, oh, jeez right and each one of these each column I've 
called class grid so we can kind of force them to be the same width. Um, we could do auto fit, min max. Yeah. Oh, you're suggesting doing a... I don't, I don't understand, Alka, the repeat auto fit. Fairy Wings, thanks so much for the host. I appreciate that. Node Botanist just resubscribed for eight months. Thank you so much. That's the Node Botanist. Great to see you, Cass. Thanks so much. Make sure you check out our friend the Node Botanist a little bit later today. What um, Normally you do hardware on Saturday, Sundays, but you're doing something different today. You like the hat? You like the, you like the Chrome Twitch hat? Yeah. Um, I got that at TwitchCon last year. So. Um, playing Screeps today. Cool. All right. So I'm doing the four across on this. And we're specifying the grid column going across of what these things are. It's a JavaScript controlled game. Nice. Thanks so much, Jake, for the sub. Appreciate that. And we'll make donations for all the subs to Coder Dojo this quarter. Make sure that they help folks everywhere in the world have facilities and instructors so they can learn how to work with technology and how to be a developer if they'd like. All right. Um, so I'm kind of distracted and confused back and forth here. So we're going to have the grids going across, but we want them to all have a width here inside of our CSS. Where is it? Span grid. Um, so we can get rid of the date view no times. So we can get rid of this. We don't have that anymore. So let me clean that out. Right? Um, <laughs> I don't really have this anymore, right? Because weak view isn't a thing over here. So I can get rid of that. So flowers need watering. All right. So day view, it's a grid template columns. So I've only got two columns to find here. Um, so we're saying, re I, so I've got repeat and you're suggesting instead of do, in, do a repeat auto fit, um, and instead of 1.5, say min max and one FR. Let's see how that works. And we can tune our CSS here as we go along. Uh, two last links for those interested in learning. There's a YouTube for CSS Grid from Amy Kaepernick. And the complete grid guide on CSS tricks. So if I look at the availability, that bothers me. So that still works. That still looks the same. We need to figure out this beginning bit over here just but if I go back and go to the manager schedule view, it didn't change anything for me over here. Oh, you weren't really suggesting it. Well, still, it's... I do want that auto fit. And, oh wait, I put it on the row. Well, the rows are okay. Hang on, let me take that back. The rows I'm okay with. And actually, the rows, that row count there, that needs to be updated. Yeah, we need to repeat the columns. And I need to repeat them after the first one. Right? And the first column, there's where it's too wide. Right? 
that should be like something like that make it a little bit smaller can I do a repeat here and repeat the rest of the way across but I'm gonna have to repeat based on how many days are passed in so it feels like that rule both of these rules need to be dynamically assigned to the day view just to test it out there right if I f12 into this right if I go up to this and if I say here right can I say repeat and it's uh, seven across mm. um wow Well, that certainly works. Part of me doesn't want to make this like that. Uh, I want to kind of force it. Ooh, that's too small. Right, if I make it three, four. Let's go just a little bit bigger. Right, repeat auto fit magically picks the right number of columns. So if I do that, but I lose the the width that I kind of forced on the front, right? I want to make the front a little bit smaller. Perhaps CSS variables. Hmm. Hmm. So I think, yeah, I think we need these, the inline style for this and for this. And we may want a header row so that we can put the dates going across. So let's, I'm going to take these two out of here, save that, go back over to here and on the day view here. Let's let's put that computed style. So I'm just can I copy the whole thing there? Good. Grid template columns and that I'm going to change to date count. And grid template rows. I'm going to change the 12 to the difference in the number of hours. Right, maybe I can just set up a property. Write a get property that says the duration. Um, int uh, number of hours. Return uh, day view. Don't I already calculate this somewhere? I thought I already did somewhere. Subtract day view start hours. That should work. You know what I haven't done today that I probably should do and I haven't? I've only got 15 minutes left. It's at the top of the loop of the component. Ah, there it is, hours per day, you're right. Um, so let's get, all right, so I don't need this. Uh, and I spelled it almost like horse. Oh my gosh. I've got horses on the mind is what I've got. So let's do that and move these up to there. So then I can go across and replace this with hours per day. And that should work. Uh, I'm going to have to restart. Rats. Hey, Frackberg, good morning. I could have set up the, uh, I could have set up the live share this morning and I didn't. I probably should have. Okay. There we go. That size is pretty good. 
All right. All right. So, and if I go back to the availability view, does that... There we go. That looks pretty good, too. All right. I'm feeling good about that. And I only made that background color Papaya Whip just because why not? It's my signature color I use when I build websites. Just because Papaya uh, papaya Whip, right? Am I, you know what I'm saying? I mean, who doesn't love wow. Papaya Whip? So, um, okay, so now we need to go across that schedule and start plotting information of how many folks are available for each time slot. And I actually don't even have a start date and end date that are being passed in to the manager view yet. Um, right, there's a my schedule state that's being passed in. And the schedule state has a selected date, has a collection of time slots, and there's no restriction on the number of time slots here. So, what's going to be happening Well, that was interesting. An emote in the page title. And it came through. Nice. Um, yes. This is something that I thought we had looked at from Sarah. Um, the CSS grid generator we had tried. So, right, this is where we first started doing a little bit of this work. Was being able to specify this way back in the day. So, yep, nice little tools from Sarah. Um, those kinds of things I'd love to see integrated with with a Visual Studio Code, so that I can write, I can click into a panel and say, "Help me generate my CSS for this." Click into whatever, and it copies it into the CSS page I'm working on. Right, there's there's an integration and an extensibility of our editor tools that we now have the option to do that would be really great. This schedule state is how we're passing around the state of the schedule that we're showing on screen. So in this manager schedule view, we could create that schedule state and pass it along so that we can say, here's the state, the date that I'm looking at, and be able to see all of my employees' schedules across this and instead of those schedules being painted where'd it go right I'm in day view instead of them being painted like this I'm going to change the template so that instead of showing the name and time I would show the number of employees who are available hey timeless hello hello so right there's a a template change that we want to be able to pass in and apply here. And that's another feature of Razor components, I'm sorry, Blazor components that we can use. But first things first, I need to get that data. I need to select out all of my employees availability data for the date that I've selected. So I need a date selector. I need a date navigator so that I can set my date and navigate around appropriately. I think that's a piece we can build here real quick. In my availability screen, right, um, we're injecting the schedule state and be allowed to pass that information around. So when I come into this, I have that. Um, hmm, wait a sec. Hmm. <laughs> on the availability page, is that where it's going and getting it? Where is it actually fetching my availability to load? Somewhere it's ah, it's right there in the on init get my availability on the availability page. When I'm on my manager view, I'll 
set my schedule date and load my schedule for everybody. So, yeah, day picker is where I'm setting the date. Since we're looking at a week, I guess we want the day picker there as well. So you see the calendar and you can choose a week to look at. But that's slightly different again. For right now, I just want to I I just want the ability to see a date and just back and forth a a week range. So maybe we put Let's call this week selector. Um, right, and if we have a... Let's, in, let's inject that schedule state. It's not on that. It's over here. My schedule state. Collect that here. Um, and on first load of this, let's default it to today. So let's set up a parameter so we can pass in and specify. Um, date time. Um, selected date. Date time today. Uh, on init. Really? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm in debug mode. Let me turn that off. I wonder if. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> so if the selected date is today, then I can find the week start and week end dates and be able to paint them as values here. Week start equals what's well, going to be selected date um, selected date we're going to subtract a number of days yeah not a time uh, new time span and it's going to be the number of days the number of days is going to be the number of days since we I'm going to start at Sunday time span from days oh yeah that'll be easier to do won't it um and we can say the the day of the week for right the selected date why did it just do that selected date day of the week so that's a enum, but if we cast it back to an int, we should get that week start date. So then week end is going to be week start, add days, seven, right? Um... Right, because Sunday is zero when you look at the days of the week. So Sunday is zero, so it'll go all the way out through Saturday. That should work properly. Yep, you're right. We just showed that. Day of the week starts at zero. So I'll be able to put inside of here, right, put a... Uh, it's not a nav link. Right, we want to put a, a, it's going to be a button. It's an href that doesn't go anywhere. 
and it'll be like a something like that and we'll put the week start through weekend week start dot to short date string uh, week end to short date string and this will be like that so now I've got a, a forward and backward button and we'll wire that up so that when you when you click it it actually goes and does something right we'll actually have it change the selected date um, so I'll put in on click here equals um, and we'll tell it to go for uh, backward seven days yeah um, change date can't I oh you know what I need to do it like this change date minus seven and I'll put the exact same method here on click change date seven and I'll create a function I don't know if I need the on in it hmm um, void change date int days to change and I'll just say selected date uh, add days days to change and by putting it in a function over here if there's other things that I need to modify that I need to do we'll move that appropriately yeah we did the developer insights at the beginning of the of the stream, Miha. Sorry about that. Um, so let's... So that should just navigate it back and forth. And... Maybe we'll see it work. Let's see just how much I broke. So far, so good. So this, the availability, that still works properly. Good. The manager schedule view. Look at that. 714 to 721. So that's today through next Sunday. It'd be nice if we put the, the days on top of that. And nope, that's not doing anything just yet. The on click of that. Let's see, what did I do wrong? Add days, days to change. Seven. So, oh, I didn't say selected date equals. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Come on now, Jeff. Gotta set it in order for it to change. Um, I feel like I also want to have a uh, day display here right so that maybe over here we have a boolean that says day display what right so this way um, should we display the uh, the dates above the grid right yeah date time is immutable you got to set it back that's eight days um, well it starts at zero let's see Let's see what we get. Method naming is hard. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there it goes. So 
right? This would be Sunday the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th. So maybe we make the last date so that it's the last date inclusive. So we change that day end so that it's not, right? Because technically it is ending at the 21st because, right, the end of the last day at the bottom here would be the 21st if we went all the way through. So, um, right, so we should change that appropriately. So it's not loading the schedule yet. And that's okay. Um, but I'll fix that. And let's add that feature to show the dates above the grid if it's turned on. So let's go back over to that manager schedule view. And the weekend, while it is that, we will add date. No, add days minus one for the display so that it shows that appropriately. So then I'll go back over here to day view now and let's now inspect this day display and decide whether to add that row to the top that shows the display of, of the days. So instead of jumping right into the for loop for these two, I'll put an if. I don't need that at. Right, so now I can say if uh, day display, um, then I'll add span class equals grid, um, style equals, this is grid column one. And I'm not actually gonna put anything in this first column. Uh, span class equals grid again. Style, well, actually, I can just steal this, can't I? And inside, I can put the days of the week. Hey, Neo Ashi, welcome. Uh, not a problem. <clears throat> so now I need to put the days of the week going across for uh, appropriately based on the yeah, the days that we're including. So how do I know what day we're starting at and the day that we're going to? Um, well, we, the day view, this, let's split this here so I can kind of pin where I'm working right there, right? And I'm gonna scroll down here and so I have the selected date, which is coming out of my schedule state. My schedule state is being passed in as a parameter here. How's that being used over here in the availability? It's being passed in like that. Okay. So let's do that same thing over on our manager view so that it's passed in and it knows those things. So that was over here, manager view. There's my day view. Let's pass in my schedule state because that's being managed there. So now I'll know the selected date and I'll be able to spe take a look at the start week end. Uh, hey, Sushinator, I think that's great. That's gonna be the way to, to do that. Um, let me look back here. Nick says, it helps to, get, to think of things not as a time range, but as a list of dates in these scenarios, and rangers are always start of the day. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Sushinator, great to see you. It's always a magical time when you're here. Eh, see that? Um, okay, let me see. Let's see, let's see. So... The selected date. So I've got to do that same begin date, end date calculation that I have over here for for the week start and week end. If that's been passed in. Right, I, I would know... Can you make a Blazor server-side as a progressive web app? 
Well, a progressive web app, by definition, lives client side and can run offline. So you you can get pretty close to it with with Blazor components, but you're going to want to make it Blazor client side, a progressive web app. It, right, it would just not be online. Uh, it would not be offline. Johan's correct. So, um, yeah, I think I need to get the the start date and the end date, but the selected date being passed in, I don't know if that's the start of the week or the end of the week. Right? Inside of my state. My schedule state. You know what I mean? This thing. So we have a selected date. I think we need the display begin and the display begin date and display end date being passed. So I'm going to add um, display begin date. display end date so that we can pass that in and be able to inspect isn't the start date the first day of the week in this week view it is but I don't know that inside the day view oh no I just received an email from have I been pwned that evite just published a breach and 100 million people have had <laughs> have had their passwords stolen that's great that's great all right let's see if we can finish this little bit here and i think i think we're going to have some friends coming oh online my. here in just a bit You've been asked about that from family 10 times today. Oh, yes. You will be asked about it. Great. You need the app experience. Install and updates on all environments. Send web notifications. You can do that with Blazor. Absolutely. Blazor client side. You're going to need some of the JavaScript capabilities so that you can interact with the browser. And uh, do the notifications. And you can do that with the... Um, JavaScript interop, right? JavaScript, we love JavaScript. Horses love JavaScript. So now that I have inside that schedule state, the begin date, end date, I'm gonna go back to my manager schedule view. And these two values, I'm going to, instead of storing on the week start weekend, I'm gonna actually put those inside of my schedule state. As display begin date um uh, Ash, uh asura dreams thanks so much for the follow i appreciate you joining us and look forward to seeing you in the chat room all right so now i've got those two values so week start doesn't exist anymore that's fine we'll just grab that value and that's not display begin, that's display end. Okay. So now I can go back over to day view. And I know this is going to be right. Yes, this is this is server side blazer that we're doing, but it's these components have the same that they can run client side in the same way. On Friday this coming week, for everybody who's watching, I want to make sure that you know there's an event scheduled. Click the ev control, click the events button above above me here. Um, we're going to do the full Blazor client side workshop live on stream. Eight hours. We're going to go through and learn all about uh, WebAssembly and Blazor live. Alka asks, why do horses love JavaScript exactly? It's It's a riff on... Um, the movie uh, Young Frankenstein Frankenstein um, whenever they said this one woman's name Frau Blucher the horses would neigh so yes that will be Friday tell your friends tell your family um, and actually 
I set something up today that should be automatically posting to the Watch People Code Reddit when I am streaming. And, uh, no, it didn't post. Oh, well. You do love that movie. Yeah, yeah. That is the soundbite. Absolutely. All right. Um, there, but somebody had a for loop here. Who was it? I thought I... Sushinator. There it is. Enum, get name, type day of week, column minus one. I like that. That's a pretty good line. Let's just take a look. Make sure that that does exactly what we needed to do to put the days of the week up at the top. Enum, get name. So that's going to get Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. For the type of day of the week, column minus one. Well, it's... Um, right, be it's, it's going to be... Um, not... Not necessarily column minus one. It's going to be the day of week for the day being displayed and the day being displayed is going to be um, my oh no uh, I think I need an at in front of that there we go uh, my schedule state display begin date right yeah um, add days the column counter Uh, minus two so that it starts at zero so it starts on the first day uh, day of week I think that'll do it but that'll give me the day of week it won't necessarily give me the um, it won't give me the date also I think I'm going to do a two string on that honey pop good to see you you're a 10x developer. Uh, Alka's more like 8x. I'm about a 2x right now. I don't think I need the get name. I think what I'd like to do here is I'd like to do a... Um, I'd, I'd like to do a two string and give it a, a custom format for the date, right? This is something you can do with, with C Sharp. Um... Uh, date time custom format and I'd like to put like the short day of week right where are they here we go I don't want the day of the month I want the shortened day of the week which I think is W is W the day of the week oh come on where is it no did I go flying past it is it a capital which one is it Day of the month, abbreviated name for day of the week, three Ds. Okay. So I'd like to I'd like to make the format for above these. Three Ds and then the abbreviated month. Right, which I believe is three M's. Three capital M's. And then uh, I said it the actual day, which I think is just a single lower D for day of the month. Yeah. And I think that'll... And, then? and I think that's about it. What's a 10x dev? 10 years experience? Um, timeless. The 10x dev is a, it's a Silicon Valley-like term that folks use to describe the, uh, somebody who's very productive and can do 10 times the the productivity as an engineer, as a developer or a programmer, than the rest of the team. Um, there was a little bit of controversy around that earlier this week um, on social media. So let's make sure the availability still works. So that works. Maybe that selected date we scoot over a little bit, but that's fine. That works. And if I click on the manager schedule view, hey! All right. I'd like it centered, but that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Um, right, let's just text align center. But that that's exactly what I'm looking for, and, and they're the right dates going across. 
Honey Pop asks, is this open source? Yes, it is. You can find this on on my uh, on my GitHub, and it's actually in a shared project right here. He should be a developer's manager manager. There are people like that, yes. Binary Chef asks, am I using two mics? You're going to make me do this. The battery went dead. Oh, my batteries went dead. One second. Oh my gosh, I'm almost out of batteries. Uh, eeny meeny. It's because of this uh, wireless mic here. Now, I have wired mics that I'm going to be using when I finish redoing my everything here. There it goes. So of course I need more than one mic. It's an amazing thing. So there you go, that's why I have more than one mic. You missed the answer. Am I planning to convert this Blazor server-side to client-side Blazor on Friday? I'm not going to convert this project, but at some point we will be using Blazor client-side uh, capabilities here. So, um, so we've got that formatted and laid out. Um, I think we're in really good shape here. I'm really happy with how this works. Uh, 2x live coder needs two mics. Nice. Uh, what do you mean doesn't work for you? The end then didn't work? It should have worked. And then? See, there it is. Everybody can end then. There is a cutoff. It, it won't run all the time. But I'm pretty happy with where we are at this point with the layout. It, it looks nice. All I have to do now is start plotting the actual events on it, and then it'll we'll be able to see what's going across here. We're going to need to do the actual calculation of folks' availability. Look at here's all the requests. Build out that collection of time slots, and that's going to be a lot of logic, business logic work we're going to have to do before we can plot the values on here. But our grid works. Our grid appears properly, and it even sizes nicely here. We may want to make that be able to scroll across. So when you hit a minimum width, it turns into a scroller down here so that you can actually look at that a little bit better. But I'm really happy with just getting that layout properly. Now, I want to make sure that we, we hand the baton off here so we have our full day of .NET developer content, not just .NET, of developer content across the line here on Twitch. So let's let's clean up a little bit and get ready to raid our next developer. So I will run a quick git status here. Yep, looks good. Updated uh, to updated day view to properly show the weak grid for managers. Fantastic. And I will sign that commit. Let me sign the command. Come on. Come on. There it is. There we go. I'll push those changes and I'll send a pull request over so it's on the shared feature branch over on the main project. All right, friends, this is really good. Um, this video, like all my other videos, and you should have seen all my other videos are on YouTube now, except for the ASP.NET Workshop. I have to do a little bit of editing before that'll get published. But everything is over on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash c -sharp fritz over there. Let's set up for our raid. It's Sunday. We always raid into our friend, the no-op cat, Suze Hinton. She's going to be working on some JavaScript, it looks like there. She's working on Electric I.O. So let's set up for that, for that raid. There's the raid call in chat. If you're a follower 
Um, if you're a subscriber, grab that first line with the raid bot. Yeah, she's working on JavaScript. If you're not a subscriber, that's okay. Grab the second line of text, and we'll head over there and we'll say hi to Suze. We'll announce our presence when we get over there to her channel. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. It's been a it's been a fun morning. I'll be back on Tuesday, and we'll uh, we'll take a look at the business logic around this. It'll be Tuesday evening, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. What is that? 2200, 10 p.m. UTC, and 9 a.m. in Sydney. Thanks so much, everybody. I will see you next time. Take care. Get ready to raid, Suze. Thanks so much. <laughs>